Today, I think something's interesting. Interesting. I go out partying. And we have a special guest. And now for a little surprise. It is... What's good, it's the Hunter Hoffman back with insane content! In this video, we have a lot of hiccups, and this was the least straightforward video I've ever made. The car has been on the lift for about 10 weeks straight, so let's see what happened. Alright, so what's the problem this time? This time, I'm hearing a noise coming from the rear of the car. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, wheel bearings. So the sound could also be the drive shafts of the car, but I'm just not sure. So we're gonna replace both wheel bearings and that. Yeah, nope. Nope. But first, we're gonna quickly install these bad boys. Alright, so that's better. Let's go ahead and remove the wheel bearings. Alright, so first we're going to remove the wheel. Then loosen the caliper. And hang it on one of the control arms with the tie wrap. Now we're going to remove the carbon disc. Okay, let's not strip these. Ah, oh, there we go. That's one. Oh, f <clears throat> and that's two. And that's our carbon ceramic disc removed. All right, so to remove the hub assembly, we would need to remove this axle nut. And as you can see, it has been staked over here and over here. So we would need to unstake this axle nut first before we can remove it. That's one. And that's two. All right, so now we're able to remove the axle nut. We're gonna do that with this bad boy and a 36 millimeter socket. Easy. All right, so now that we've removed the axle nut, we need to push in this axle to the inside so that we can reach the bolts of the wheel bearings. This is, however, impossible to do by hand. And it's also a bad idea to whack it with a hammer. Don't ask me how I know. So we're first going to try out the bearing puller to see if we can push this inwards. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and tried on this bearing puller, but this thing is just Chinese garbage. We're not gonna use it. It just, it doesn't grip at all. All right, so say something like this, and then if we try to, here, look, it just deforms and just, it's not gripping at all. See, whatever, it's now it's coming loose. It's, it's just not, it's, it's not gonna work. This is not gonna work. <clears throat> Bing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna punch a little hole in here, and then we're gonna use the rotary hammer to push it through the hub. All right, so that'll do for the rotary hammer. All right, well, here goes nothing. Baby, it's gone through finally. Oh, that's amazing! All right, yeah. All right, so these are two of the bolts to remove the bearing from the hub. This E14 socket still doesn't fit in there, as you can see, it's not able to slip on the bolts still. 
So I'm gonna use this open end wrench, an 11, to gain access to the bolts like so. I'm gonna do this off camera. Before letting you show this, you are able to get this one on all four of them. And it's gonna take a lot of force to get them undone. All right, so we have a problem. As you can see, the old bolts are conically shaped, while the new bolts are not. I'm now starting to wonder if these are the right bearings, but first we're going to remove the old bearings and then we're gonna find out. To do so, we're first going to remove the ABS sensor that's sitting in the wheel bearing with the T30. Here we go, gonna put this on the side. To create some space, we're going to remove the handbrake assembly don't forget to put the handbrake in service mode before you do so. And the handbrake adjust. Good job. <laughs> Alright, so that's the handbrake adjuster removed. And the handbrake shoes. And the bracket for the cable of the handbrake. There we go. And now it's a matter of whacking it off, I suppose. Yeah, baby. Let's go. And that's our bearing removed. Yeah, baby. All right, for a good measure, we're also going to remove the heat shield. My M3 is a bit crusty here and there, so we're also going to try and get this back in good looking condition because this doesn't look good at all. Yeah, this all looks terrible, so we're gonna give this a quick clean in the end. All right, so our next objective is to get the hub removed from the bearing. I mean, look at how crusty this thing looks. Let me hold it up to my mic so you can hear the noise it makes. Oh. Go cop yourself some. All right, so maybe this bearing puller will come in handy after all. This is the contraption I made. I hope that it grips well enough to um, pull the bearing off the hub. Ugh. Let's try again. Okay, I'm gonna need a vice for this. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Oh, God damn it. Why doesn't this work? Oh, for f sake. F your ding, Junge. It's just not getting a grip, I'm afraid. See, over there, it's just gonna lose grip any second. Ah, it did give me an idea though. So now it's pretty much jammed up in there. Let's see if we can make something of this. All right, I screwed in a wheel bolt for leverage. Ah, God damn it. All right, so as you can see, that didn't work. In the meantime, I ordered a kit with which you're able to pull a bearing from a hub flange. More on that later. All right, so in the meantime, while we're waiting for parts and tools, I wanted to tackle the fadedness of these black panels, especially the cowl below the windscreen. So I'm gonna remove it and I'm gonna treat it with something called Coat. All right, so after giving these parts a thorough wash and dry, we're now going to use the Coat Restoration Kit to restore the shine of this part. Ooh, this stuff smells. So it's important that the parts are thoroughly dry. All right, so now we're gonna let this one dry and continue with the other ones. And that's the second one. So now we're going to let this dry too, and then I'm going to show you some befores and afters. Alright, so as you can see, these are the befores, and these are the afters. Way more shine and depth. Alright, so time to get these shiny new parts back on the car. 
We're not going to clean the lower part of the window. That doesn't seem necessary to me. Of course that's necessary. So let's quickly pop these parts back on. All right, so to be honest, I'm not really a fan of the results. I do think these panels came out rather well, but the one below the windshield is just a bit too shiny in my opinion. I kind of underestimated the Sarah coat, I believe. These things happen. I just wanted to be transparent with y'all. So um, yeah, it is what it is, but uh, on to the next thing. All right, so another thing that we can do while waiting for parts and tools is to clean everything up here. Thankfully, we have a new sponsor of the channel called XCP. I saw this on the channel of Shredden from M539 Restorations, and well, if he's using it, then it's probably good stuff. Now you're gonna protect it with XCP rust blocker. This will stop it from oxidizing for the years to come. Obviously, my channel was able to get sponsored because, well, my channel was better and bigger than his, so let's see how this goes. I also have the rust blockers, and I'll later show you how those two work. All right, so we start out with a bit of degreaser. Then we're gonna give it a go with a brush. Then a wire wheel. All right, well, I went a bit overboard perhaps, but um, at least it's very clean now. This stuff works um, pretty well, actually, and um, it smells good as well. So yeah, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? And this only took me about two minutes. It did not. But I'm happy with the results. Now for the other side. All right, so as you can see, this thing is quite dirty. So we're gonna give this a thorough clean as this would not match the rest of the hub assembly. So we're gonna use the XCP cleaner and degreaser to give it a quick clean. Then we're gonna give it a go with a wire wheel and in the end, provide it with a bit of rust blocker. So now for the other side, which is way more dirty. All right, well, so as you can see, this thing looks pretty terrible. So now a lot of work with the wire wheel, and then hopefully we'll get it as good looking as possible. So let's put some work in. So this looks much better. So we're gonna treat it once more with the cleaner and degreaser, and then we're gonna go ahead and put on some rust blocker. All right, so we're gonna spray some light coats of rust blocker on this. And now we're gonna let it dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna give these bad boys a clean. Yep, that looks much better. All right, so the set of tools I was talking about earlier was this one. Off camera, I gave it a try to remove the bearings from the hub, but as you can see, that didn't go well. I put so much pressure on the tool that things started to bend. The bearings would not come loose. So after waiting on this set of tools for nothing, I took the bearings home and went to a local shop and asked them to remove the bearing from the hub. They were able to do so within a couple of minutes. As you can see, a part of the bearing is still attached to the hub. Luckily, I was able to remove this piece with the set of tools I bought. They were not for nothing in the end. Yes, it's going off. Oh yeah. There we go. It took me many weeks to get this done, but uh, we finally managed to get it done. And looking at the bearing, I think we're onto something. Because that's not supposed to be there. So I hope that's the culprit of our issue. And now for a little surprise. We have a very special guest today. It is the M2. So the current owner reached out to me to ask if I can help him install an active auto work catted downpipe. I was of course happy to oblige. So here's a little time lapse of how that went.
All right, and now for some befores and afters. The current owner also did a couple of modifications, all original and performance, so it got my stamp of approval. He did this, this, and this. So the car sounds even better now, and it's really good to see it again. Now, back to the M3. Alright, so now time to address the wheel bearings. Wait a minute. I've seen these before. And OE FAG wheel bearings, but be careful here. There have been reports of FAG and this company here, Schleuflöfer, switching their production to China. And those wheel bearings, they last about four to five minutes. So don't use them. These are still OE high quality bearings made in Slovakia. Oh no, please no. Oh no. All right, so now it's time to assemble the hub flange to the bearing. I think it's important to do this as clean as possible. Off camera, I went ahead and gave this hub flange a clean. I'll quickly show you how to do this with this one. I'm gonna spray some degreaser in the splines, then give it a quick clean with the wire brush, then thoroughly clean it with a towel. Oh yeah. I'm gonna quickly use this brush to finish it off. So you can see two things. You can see that the splines are thoroughly clean, but you can also see the corrosion it has, what made them so stuck in the first place. Then obviously we're gonna give the mating surface a good clean. And that should be good enough. All right, everyone. So let me try this out for the first time. So I already put this on here by hand, like so. As you can see, all these surfaces are very clean. I believe I'm supposed to go, we're gonna put this like so, and then we're gonna insert this socket on top of here. I'll show you in a second how it looks like. First, allow me to figure this out. Yeah, something like this, I suppose. It's a bit crooked in here, don't you think? Yeah, it's a bit crooked. No, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm gonna do that again. All right, so as you can see, that's straight as an arrow, just like me. Yeah, women. So, um, let's give this a go. I can already tell I'm gonna need a vise for this. Alright, so this feels a lot better, so let's give this a try. It's not going at all. I'm gonna loosen it again. Oh, it, it entered at an angle. What a f pain this is. Here, look, now it entered at an angle, which is not what's supposed to happen. Hmm. All right, so as you can see, this is much better. Let's give this a go. I'm not, uh, it's not moving, is it? Or is it? Uh. Uh. Oh yes, it's going. 
Oh yes, it's going, finally. Well, that took a lot of pressure, but now it's going. Oh yeah. Not gonna lie, that was a bit scary. But we're in. Uh, it was it was bottoming out here, so that's why it didn't move any further. But uh, we only need a tiny bit more, and then we're good. So now I turned this thing around, so now it's going to be able to bottom out. There we go. And that is one wheel bearing installed. Then for the second bearing... Nope. That's bad. Uh. Uh. Round two. Well, actually round four or five, but you didn't get to see the previous rounds. All right, so take a million, I believe. Let's do this. Let's send it. Ah, not again. It's still not going. Ah, what? Oh man, I cannot tell you how much I hate this that it goes crooked again. It's like the hundredth time I try now. It's it's really annoying. What about this then? Oh, that, that's it? It was that easy. Oh man. Sometimes my genius frightens me. My inner Jeremy Clarkson here. Okay, so finally we can now screw this in. Watch this. Oh yeah. Look at it go. And that's our second bearing installed. Alright, so I guess I should have listened to Shredden as these bearings are indeed crap. Not sure if you can see this, but these things are not tight at all. And yes, this is after fully torquing down the axle nut and fully pressing these together. I'm gonna go disassemble everything again, order new bearings, and further delay the video with another two weeks. Apologies. Alright, so this is just getting worse and worse and worse. As you can see, I bought some new wheel bearings, this time from SKF. And when I opened the box, I was very happy to see this made in Slovakia. So then I started to unbox the package and look what I found. You are absolutely kidding me. China. 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 F-A-G. I'm not sure if I'm being pranked here, but this is just unbelievable. How can these end up in these packages? I just don't understand. I'm gonna go get to the bottom of this, but it's again gonna cost me a lot of time, very much delaying the video. Hi everyone. Just a quick intermezzo of the current video you're watching now. You're probably wondering, why is the DCT gearbox opened up again? So since the making of the video of the DCT gearbox service, I found out two things. One was that the o-ring of my current suction pump was broken. So next up is the reinstall of the suction pump. As this thing is still oiled up, as you can see, we would not need to lube it. So that needed replacing. And second, I found out that the suction pump is actually serviceable. So I bought a new one to install it. As you can see, this one comes with new o-rings, so we'll be fine there. And technically, you would also need to replace the fill plug. So I ordered a new one as well. 
so I'm going to quickly remove this one and put the new one back in. Once done, just follow the process in the video in the top right hand corner. Now, back to the nightmare of the current video. Alright, we're back. We're back with OEM wheel bearings this time. I was done waiting around. I just wanted to have good ones, so no OE parts, just OEM parts. Made in Slovakia. And as you can see, this time, made in Slovakia. Also made by FAG, but Slovakia. Apologies for my voice, by the way. I was um, busy over the weekend. That was pretty cool. All right, well, back to uncool stuff. All right, so there we are. Here are the hubs installed on the bearings. I have already showed you this process earlier in the video, so I did this off camera real quick. My Slovakian bearings installed. That's a sentence I've probably never said before. Anyways, I'm now gonna show you how to get these bad boys installed on the car. So let's do this. All right, so before we start reassembly of the bearings, we're first going to reinstall these backing plates. All right, so beforehand, I put some ceramic grease inside the spline so that they do not rust up again like they did before. So let's slide this bad boy over the CV axle. There we go. So before we're going to slide the assembly all the way back, we're first going to reinstall the bearings with the new bolts. All right, so as you can see, space is super limited here, hence why we're not going to push through the CV axle yet. We would first need to install these bolts into here and then we can push through the CV axle. And that's one. That's two. There it is. All right, so that's all four of them hand tight. All right, so as you can see, the um, bearing is now hand tight. As you can also see, there's literally no play in this bearing whatsoever. Unlike the, um, the Chinese one. So that's a good start. So let me show you why we're not able to use a torque wrench to get this bearing properly torqued. As you can see these um, bolts over there, you're just not able to fit a torque wrench in there. So we're going to use a ratchet and these big boys to get it done. We're going to start out with this one. <sighs> That's one, I guess. <sighs> it's pretty tight in there. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go do one more checkup off camera and then I'm gonna call them good and tight. All right, so I was able to tighten it down the slightest bit more, but um, this thing is on here for good, believe me. So now it's a matter of getting the axle through the hub. We're going to do that by pulling slash pushing the hub through the axle. If we're not gonna manage it with manpower, we're going to use a hammer and a piece of wood to get it through. So let's see what happens. All right, so let's start by pushing the axle through. All 
Alright, it's not really going, isn't it? Let me try out a piece of wood and a hammer. Is it going? Uh, I'm not sure, I, I can't see, but uh, let's twist it a bit. From my perspective, it looks to be going. Yeah, I think it's going. Good. Let's twist it one more time to get it evenly in. I believe we would now be able to um, screw on the axle nut, tighten it, and by that way pushing the axle through the hub. Let's give that a go. <sighs> All right, so I think I messed up big time. Just watch this. Not sure if you can hear or see that, but I believe the bearing is damaged again. And I think I know why this time. I believe hammering in the CV axle through the hub like I did is actually damaging the bearings. Before I started hammering, although very slightly and although with a piece of wood, there was no play at all as I've just showed you. So I believe the eccentric force of hammering in the CV axle stresses out the bearings to a point that they start to become, well, loose. I'm afraid it's just me messing up here. In the meantime, I've already checked how to properly do this job and it would be with the need of a CV axle puller. So I've ordered one in the meantime. For you guys, this is gonna be the next shot. For me, it's gonna be another couple of days or so. So yeah, see you in a bit. All right guys, so here's the set of tools I was talking about. This is a drive shaft puller set, and this over here is the size that works for us. So with this set of tools, we can, oh, oh, that's pretty cool. Damn. So with this set of tools, we can push the drive shaft through the hub and the bearing without having to hammer it. So let's give this a go. All right, so we're first gonna screw on the right size adapter. Just make sure it's hand tight. Then we're gonna screw in this puppy. And make sure that's hand tight as well. Then we're gonna bring this all the way down. So now that's all snug, and by screwing this one while counter-holding this one, we would be able to pull the axle. All right, so let's give this a go. All right, that should be it. Now we're gonna undo it again. And let's see if this worked. Oh yeah, that looks good. Yeah, that definitely worked. And it actually looks like the play is completely out of the, um, out of the bearing. Interesting. All right, so after having dropped the car down, I screwed in two wheel bolts so that we can put in a crowbar like so to create some leverage while installing the new axle nut. So we're first gonna install it by hand, like so. And then torque this puppy to 300 Newton meters. There we go. All right, so next up we would need to stake the axle nut. We're gonna do that with a hammer and a punch. <sighs> All right, so that's one. And that's two. All right, so what I'm thinking here is that the axle puller pulled the flange and the part of the bearing like back together, like pushed it all back together, as well as the fastening of the axle nut with a lot of torque. So I think we got away with hammering the axle from the rear. Having said that, the hammering was not that excessive. First of all, I used a piece of wood and the hammering wasn't that hard. So now we're going to install the handbrake assembly. All right, so note that I've also cleaned the brake disc thoroughly and also weighted. 
as you can see, we're at 8520 and the minimum weight is 7585. So we're well within spec. And here is the other disc, also well within spec. Note that this one has a different weight. All right, now for the brake disc and caliper. Then also don't forget to screw back in the ABS sensor. And finally, put back on the wheel. All right guys, so there we have it. That's how you replace the rear wheel bearings of an F80M3. The poor car has been on the lift for about 10 weeks and it's actually the first time she's standing back on her wheels again. Off camera, I went ahead and adjusted the handbrake again and torqued the wheels down. As you can see, he's been collecting dust for quite, quite a while now. Um, so let's find out if this solved our issue. I'm sorry, it's not gonna happen. As I told you, this was the least straightforward video I've ever made. I made the mistake of not trickle charging the car while it's been on the lift for 10 weeks straight. Hence why the battery is dead and the car won't start. But no problem, I'll just buy a new battery and quickly continue. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching. And see you next time! So what I'm suspecting are the rear wheel bearings. Rear wheel bearings. Ooh. Rear wheel bearings. Yeah, rear wheel bearings. All right. So we're gonna... Um, so we're just... So we're gonna simply try out to replace the real... Jezus... <laughs> All right. So, so although I bought a new, so I, so although I bought a new bearing, so I, so, uh, so although I bought a new bearing because I was, so although I got, so, uh,